Okay. So we are going to get started. We're going to jump right in. And we want to welcome everyone to our webinar on creative photo editing. We're going to have so much fun tonight. Um, we've got a lot of really creative ideas, hopefully things you're going to learn along the way. Um, also, we will be doing a giveaway because giveaways are a ton of fun. And to enter, all you need to do is either um, put anything in the chat window, just, you know, like, as we're going along, if you have any kind of comments or anything, pop those in there. And then on Twitter, if you'd like to participate there, you can use the hashtag LoveThatEdit, and we'll be able to find you, and you can find us at LoveThatShop. And just to clarify, you don't need to put the hashtag or the at love that shot in the chat window, just on Twitter. And we are going to be giving away some awesome things. Um, tonight we are re-releasing four new collections of textures and veils, and we're so excited about it. Um, we're re-releasing the Botanical Collection, the Simplicity Collection, the Fairy Tale Collection, and the Botan Old World Collection. Old World question? Yeah. Okay, I think that's four. And we're going to give two participants of the webinar today, we're going to give two of you your choice of any of our collections of textures or veils, whichever one you like. So that's awesome. And then um, we are going to be giving away, we're working, 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 working on a new workshop. Um, an element photo editing workshop that we'll be releasing in March. And so we're going to be giving one lucky webinar attendee um, a seat in it. And that's valued at $147. So awesome stuff. Um, yeah. So just really quick, I'll go over what we're going to be talking about tonight. Um, First off, we're we know we're releasing re-releasing the photo veils, and we know that a lot of you aren't familiar with what photo veils are. So we're going to be kind of going over those and introducing them to you, as well as editing a few of our own photos. Michelle has some awesome photos. She's going to show you how she her favorite ways of adding creativity to her photos, and then. Um, last man at a photo contest to celebrate the re-release of these collections and a ton of you sent us your awesome photos and we've gone through this week and pulled them out and edited them and we featured uh, several in videos yesterday to kind of um, get some excitement going for tonight. So um, out of those that we featured, we have selected nine to um, show you tonight how we edited them and our favorite tricks for using textures and Michelle's photo veils. And you can use, the, these techniques can be used with um, basically any textures out there. So they're not specific to ours necessarily. So. Um, yeah, so okay, so we're gonna we're gonna tell you a little bit about ourselves, introduce you to introduce us to you. I can't talk. <laughs> but um I'm Missy and um I have been interested in design and graphic design forever and ever, as long as I can remember. I went to school for it. I got my degree in graphic design. And I've actually been using Photoshop for, I counted tonight, 13 years. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's quite a bit of experience. And I started out with Photoshop 6. And um, I think there's been 10 upgrades since then. So that's what I started out in my very first graphic design class in college. And um, yeah, so I'm, I'm, my favorite photo editing software is Photoshop, but 
Elements is quite similar too, and it does the basics. So I love both of them. So take it over. <laughs> Hi, I'm Michelle, and I I actually do a lot of photo editing in Elements, and I actually got started with Elements before I even got started in photography. I had kids, and I got into digital scrapbooking. I, I actually started with paper scrapbooking, and that just got overwhelming because there's so much stuff, and it <laughs> was just everywhere. So I thought, um, I'm going to try this new digital scrapbooking, and because it, it seems a lot more clean, and I don't have to pick up a mess every time I want to walk away from my scrapbooking. So I started out with Photoshop Elements, and I fell in love with the program, and it just, it was so easy to use. And so I've been using Elements probably for, oh, I started out with one of the first ones years and years ago. And so I eventually got into photography, and I realized that Photoshop is actually great for editing photos, too. So. I got into editing photos and I love, I love to edit my photos and uh, over the years I've come up with some really cool things that I like to do to my photos. So I want to share with you some of that tonight. And I, I have a process I do with pretty much every single one of my photos. And it, that's what I like to call foundation editing. It just with these edits, it lays the foundation for my create, creative edits. <laughs> so this, I, I do foundation editing on every single photo. And if you're not familiar with foundation editing, that's actually going to be included in the new elements workshop we're working on for this month. So I will go into detail on all of my foundation edits. So. You'll look forward to that. And I've been seeing a lot of you have never heard of photo veils before. And it's something I came up with out of um, sort of an, a need for ease. I had um, been working with some actions and just I noticed some of the, oh, I'm sorry, I'm starting to I I noticed with the actions that I it was hard to find the right action for the right photo. And this kind of led me into creating photo veils. And what photo veils do, they're uh, uh, I don't know the right thing of color. A sheer layer of color. A sheer layer of color. That's good. <laughs> So what this does is I put the photo veils over my photos and on top of all of foundation edits I've already done. And the photo veils melt into my photos. They just create a really cool color effect that I wasn't able to achieve with the actions and other edits that I've been experimenting with. So that's kind of how I came to create photo veils. And I, I'm going to actually show you what, how cool these photo veils are. So um, I am going to get into showing you some of my editing process. OK, so this is my little girl. She's six years old. and. Um, what I wanted to do with this photo was to give it a real natural, um, an, a real natural look, not anything crazy. So I am going to start with um, some of my foundation editing. And I'm working in Photoshop Elements. And the first thing I usually always do is add a levels adjustment layer. Oh, there we go. Okay. So in the levels adjustment, you'll see this um, sort of mountainy graph. I will usually take the 
slider on the left and pull it to the right a little bit and you see that darkened up the shadows. So I'll bring that in a little bit and then I'll grab the right hand slider and bring it to the left a little bit. And you can see that lightens up the highlight. So I'll bring those in a little bit and what this does is it adds a sort of um, a little contrast boost and really kind of makes the image pop a little bit. So you can see with just that one adjustment, I really um, uh, changed the photo. So that's what, that's the basis of my foundation. That's what I usually do first. So with this photo, I'm not going to do a lot of my other foundation edits. I am I'm going to jump right into Veil. And we have um, I'm, I'm going to interrupt just a second. Some people are having difficulties with the sound. I have to give them a note. <laughs> um, Kind of spell right. Okay. Do that or okay. <laughs> Sorry, we're getting some tech help from our tech guys. Um, if you're just joining us. Um, the quality might look just a little bit low because we have to do that in order to stream this and um, not have any like glitches and stuff. So if it's looking just a little bit low quality, that's why. Okay. Um, I'm trying to fix the gray, bro gray box problem. Are you seeing? You should be seeing a note that says, you know, a note for the people just joining us. Okay. Are we ready to move to law? Do I minimize the note? Okay. Okay. We're back on. <laughs> okay, so continue, continue. Okay. So we have created an action. To help you load our photo veils and textures. And the action we have for the photo veils is called Veil Infusion. And this comes with every, it, it will come with the photo veils and textures. So, okay. All right, so to add a the veil in just the basic way, I do the veil infusion action. So you just click on it and press the play button. And then it'll say if in the following window, navigate to the veil you'd like it to use. It's showing up as a gray box. We are going to be reading what's showing up. Just to make it clear. Yeah. It's a different window. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. So um, when you play the action, it will pop up a box that says, in the following window, navigate to the veil you would like to use. 
then click Place. Resize the veil to cover your entire photo. Finally, double click on the photo to commit the change. The action will continue automatically. Ready to get started? Click Continue to select a veil. Okay, so now I, I know you're seeing gray boxes, right? So what it's doing now is um, navigating me to where the veils are. Um, pause just a second. It's not recognizing these menus popping up in the in the screen share. So you will be seeing a gray box but we're going to explain to you basically what's happening is it's giving us a menu of what to select. So you just go and navigate to your folder, select, and then just play. Okay, so I'm navigating to where my photo veils are. And now it's running the action. So is this a great thing? Okay. All right, so it's placed the photo veil over my photo. And now what I'll do is rotate it to match the orientation of my picture. So actually, let me click out of here really quick. If you'll see, there's a lighter spot in the photo veil. I like to place the lighter spots right over my subject. So what I'm going to do is rotate this so that the um, lighter spot is right over her face. So I'll write it, ro rotate it 98. And then I'll drag the corner out to place it completely over my photo and then apply it. And now the action has run all of the um, adjustments automatically, so it takes all of the work out for you. So what it did is it put it into the soft white blending mode, and that is the basic photo veil application. I used soft light blending mode with nearly all of the photo veils, and um, that's just my go-to blending mode that works with all of the photo veils. So I have the photo veil set, and I'm actually going to take the opacity down just a little bit. So photo veils are great because you can adjust the opacity and adjust the intensity of your, the effect that the color or the photo veils apply to your photo. So on this photo, that's all, that's the only photo veil I'm going to put on here. And it just gives me exact, the exact look that I want. So it's really subtle, it's really natural, but it gives just the right amount of pop to the photo. So before so, you move on, um, show them the before and then what you've done. Okay. So with this, I just did two edits. And this is the before, and this is the after. So it's just two simple edits. You take your photo from just OK to fabulous. Mm -hmm. OK, <clears throat> so I'm going to move on to another photo. And this one is going to use, I'm going to use two photo veils on this one. And really quick, I'm going to show you another foundation edit that I love to do on all my photos. And I'm going to put in the levels adjustment. And the levels is really fun because you can just whip it out really quick. And then I'm going to add a hue saturation adjustment layer. And I'm going to click the colorize. And you'll see it kind of get a weird color to the photo. And I'm going to click on hue and change that to 30. And it adds a sepia tone over the photo. And this layer, I'm going to set it to soft light and take the opacity down to about 30%. And I love, I love using this. 
because it really gives it a um, an added contrast boost and a little bit of warmth. It's <clears throat> it's it just a different kind of boost. I love boosting stuff. I use I do that all the time. So here is just without those two edits and with them, and it already made the photo look great. So now I'm going to apply two photo rails, and I'm working with the actions again, and we do the veil infusion, play it, and I'm going to navigate to where my photo veils are. Did it? Okay. Okay. All right, and I'm actually using the same photo veil I used in the last photo, and I actually, this is my go-to photo veil for all of for my um, pictures with people in them, because it just works really great. And this one is in the botanical collection, it's called Privet. And we take the opacity down a little bit. And now, here's the fun one. I'm going to use the Fuel Infusion Blast action. And I'm going to navigate to the photo veil. And this time, this is a really interesting photo veil that I love to do this technique with. Um, if you see, there's kind of a, a pattern in the colors that go from the top and they kind of sweep down to the bottom. What we want to do is make those sweeping motions come from the top right-hand corner because this is going to um, simulate light. I'm going to flip it over so now you can see those. Um, sweeping motions are coming from the right. And now you can see what the Veil Infusion Blast does. Is It gives you several different blending mode options. And I'm going to take it off the soft light and put on hard light. And what this does is it kind of creates a, a really cool light effect. Those colors just melt right into every little nook and cranny in that photo and they make a really cool sunset light effect. And with this, it's a little bit strong for this photo right here. And actually the hard light automatically puts it at 50% opacity because 100% gets really, really strong. And it's kind of a little bit too much for most photos. But 50% seems to work good. And I'm going to take it down to about 30, 35%. And there's that photo veil. And it's so much fun. So cool. So show them the before and then what you've edited. Okay, so there's the complete before and there's the after. And so really, these photo veils are so easy to use. They just take minutes. They're really, really fast. Okay, so I'm going to move on. Okay, before we move on to this part, I want to um, take just a second. If you're just joining us, um, go ahead and type any question that you have related to what we're doing, the editing, things like that, into, you should see a button at the top of the viewing window that says Ask Questions. If you click that, you can type in your question there. And that way, it'll keep it out of the chat, and we'll be able to find it at the end of the webinar. So that would be great if you could do that. And if you would like to just, you know, keep commenting in the chat window, that's great. And on Twitter, the hashtag is LoveThatEdit, and you can find us at LoveThatShot. Also, so we're going to move on to one part of the webinar. Like we said in the beginning of the of the webinar, that we ran a, co a photo contest this last week, and 
we had a bunch of people submit their awesome photos and we pulled out some and featured in videos on our blog post yesterday. From those, we've selected nine to win their choice of photo veils or textures from our collection. So we're going to go ahead and announce who those winners are, but we're going to do something a little bit different. Instead of just, you know, saying their names and leaving it at that, we're going to show you how we edited their photos. Um, so we're going to start with the photo veil, and Michelle's going to tell you how she edited. Okay. And the veils are very, very high quality. They're coming across a little splotchy because we have to keep the, uh, the quality of the streaming down, but just I want you to know they are very, very high quality. So, yeah. Okay, so our first winner is Diana Smith. And I, and if, if you're on, Diana, um, give a shout out in the chat. So, okay. sorry. Yes, <laughs> I love this photo. I'm, I'm a flower person, I love flowers. So this one just drew me to this immediately. And what I wanted to do was create a really soft dreamy effect and to enhance what she already captured. So the first, um, I used actually three photo veils on this um, picture. And they are from, they're all from the Simplicity Collection. And the first I used was one called Honeycrisp. And what this does is it's going to really lighten up the photo to give that dreamy effect. So we'll put it on here really quick. And you can see that already lightened it up and really made it soft and dreamy. So the next one I'm putting on <laughs> Sorry. Okay. This one is called Rowan Ash, and I love what this one does. It really kind of put it, it plays with the shadows a little bit more and puts a nice warmth into the photo. And then the last one. is chamomile and I love this one and this combination is awesome with this photo and the fun things about photo veils is you can layer them layer the heck out of them it they really work together really fun so I'm going to take the opacity down on that one a little bit and that's it So there's the before, and there's the after. So I really love what this did to that photo. Okay. All right. There is Nina Brender, and I love this cow picture. Oh, I love it. And I really wanted to enhance the misty, moody yeah. feel of this <laughs> photo. He's not saying that I'm moody. <laughs> no. <laughs> the foggy feel. <laughs> so, in this photo, I used the botanical collection. And I'm going to start. And the botanical collection is really fun because it includes a set of vintage um, photo veils. So, with those Vintage photo veils, you use the vintage blast action. So I'll start with that. And I'm going to choose plum. And I'll resize it to 
Take over the photo. And then the vintage glass puts it into the exclusion blending mode. And what this does is it 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 plays with the shadows and it's so cool. It really gives it a fun vintage feel. Oh, this is Lana. So there's the before and there's the after with the vintage glass photo veil. So already there it just took it from cool to really cool. <laughs> so I'm going to put one more photo veil on this to um, make it a little bit more warm. Okay. Photo veil, and there's with it. So it really gave it an even more cool vintage feel. So here's the before, and there's the after. Okay. So before we move on, I'm going to break in for a second. And for those of you who are just joining us, um, the photos are going to look just a little bit blotchy because we're on a lower quality. We have to screen the video at a lower quality in order to get it to function. If you want to see these photos, at all, visit our um, website. We made a post yesterday where we have these photos featured in videos that you can look through and see the before and after in those videos. So, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, the next winner is Jean Matheson. And I love this photo. I was just blown away at the photos we got submitted. It, it was so hard to choose. Very but hard. this one, I loved it. And what I loved about this one is it had so much potential. Um, it was a little bit dark and the and the girl is a little bit dark and but I knew with the photo veils it, I could really make it come alive. And so, bring out the subject. And bring out the subject because she's beautiful and the way she frames this is just gorgeous. So I wanted to create um, a softer hazy effect. So with this one, I'm going to use the botanical collection because I know I have photo veils in there. Let's see, botanical is simplicity. Oh, simplicity. Sorry. <laughs> simplicity collection. And I love I love the lighter photo veils in this collection. They're perfect for doing these sorts of effects. And on this one, I'm using grass stains. And I'm going to leave it at 100%. So with just that one photo veil, it lightened her up so much. And it's starting to take shape of what I had in my head. So I'm going to put another photo veil on. And this one's going to warm it up a little bit while still lightening. I'm, I'm going to leave that at full opacity. And so there is without that. And you can see it starting to take on the dreamy, soft feel to it. And so it's just those two. It's really started to lighten it up and give it a cool effect. And I have one more photo veil that I'm going to put on this one. And it's just going to be the frosting on the cake. <laughs> and this, the name of this photo veil is fun. It's called Salmon Salad Surprise. And my sister and I, Misty, we, we love to quote movies. <laughs> <laughs> because we love movies, and 
I, this is from a movie that's just hilarious. And so I thought it would be fun to put that in. I thought it would This movie. So um, um, it's called Ollie Hop Noodles Haven of Bliss. <laughs> and it's, it's, I don't know if you can find it anymore. I haven't been able to find it. But it, it's awesome. So funny. So I'm, I took the opacity down. Oh, yeah. Um, just back onto the movie. It's a continuation of The Christmas Story. I'm sure many of you have seen that oh, movie with Ralphie. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a story of him when he's like 14 years old. So yeah, it's fun. So here is the Sam and Salad Surprise photo veil, <laughs> and it put a little bit of a pinkish salmon glow to the photo. <laughs> And it was just perfect. So here's the before. A really good photo that could use a little ink. And here's what the photo there is. I love, I love this photo. Love it. It's awesome. Okay, so our next is Harry Vorholt. And I love this photo too. Holy cow. There's some <laughs> great photos. So with this one, I wanted to put sort of an edgy look because of the subject matter. So I went to the botanical collection. And I wanted to lighten it up just a teensy bit. So um, I'm going to use white clover. And sometimes you might think, why is she putting that color onto that photo? It just, it, it's funny to see what photo veils work with, what picture they have. Some can surprise you. So on this one, I'm going to take the opacity down just a little bit. So there's without the veil, and there's with the veil. And I'm going to use two of the vintage veils to give me that edgy look. First one is chive, and it's um, a darker green color to go with the the first photo veil I put on. And I'm going to take the opacity down quite a bit on this one because I just want a little of that vintage effect. So that's what the that photo veil did, and I'm going to put one more on. And it is the blood orange photo veil. And it's sort of a, a deep red. And I'll take this one down to 50%. Because the 100% on this photo was a little bit strong. So, there. Perfect. So here's the before. And here's the after. And it really, I, I loved these photo veils on this picture because it gave it that edgy kind of rock and roll effect. So that's it for the photo veil winners. Awesome. Now we're going to move on to the textures. And we're going to switch programs into Photoshop now. So bear with us just for a second. Okay, is the Photoshop showing? Okay, great. Give us just one second here. One more second. We're having just one minor technical glitch. Oh, 
Okay, so we're having this suspension of a of a problem with the um, action. Um, <laughs> we had to. I'm using a different computer, and um, we're just going to place them on manually. <laughs> I couldn't navigate to where I thought they were, so we're going to just um, go on. And okay, so the first the first the first winner is James Hahn. And um oh goodness. I gotta get my notes. <laughs> okay. This was just an awesome, awesome photo. So thank you so much, Jane. Thank you so much for submitting it. It's just so pretty. So we're going to lay on a few textures to see um, how they affect this photo. We'll open up the folder. And I'll select the first one. I'll put on is called Luau. And we'll move it over the photo. And for this one, I'm going to select the soft light blending mode and keep it at 100%. And just so just so you know, um, when you're placing a texture over a photo, um, you can stretch it and to fit your photo, you don't have to do it proportionately unless something in the texture needs to stay intact. So um, just a little bit of uh, an FYI there. Um, Okay, pause for just one more second. Um, give us just one second. Give us one second while we load something in. We're going to pause the um, presentation just one second.
Okay, so we are back. I'm hoping. Can everybody hear it? I think. Awesome. Oh. <laughs> okay, so can everybody see the photo of the flowers of Jane Hawes? Are we good? Can everybody hear? We're good to go? We're good to go. Good? We got the A okay? Okay. So, <laughs> sorry, we are definitely live <laughs> and we're going to have um, glitches pop up. So, thank you so much for bearing with us um, as we took care of that situation. Okay, so we'll move on. Uh, okay, so I have placed the Luau texture on and given it a soft light blending mode. I'm going to leave the opacity at 100% because um, I think it just it works with this photo. So I'm going to go ahead in the actions panel. Um, you'll see, I think you'll see the actions panel. Okay, um, there are the Similar to the veil uh, actions, there's texture infusion which applies the action as well as texture infusion blast and smoothing smooths the texture and tone it down, tones down the color. So I'm going to, and these actions come along with our textures too, so um, there's that. So I'm going to go ahead and run smoothing. So. Oh. Okay. <laughs> and I'm going to invert the mask um, to black so that I can paint over the areas of the photo that I want to take some of that texture away. Um, you'll do this most often with um, people over skin texture just looks terrible over skin. So, but I like to do it on flowers as well sometimes because the um, flowers have their own texture. So we want it to shine through. So I'll go ahead and select a soft round brush and make sure that the white is showing in the foreground, and then I'll set the opacity to 50%. And then I'll just come on here and paint away some of the some of the texture on the veil. So you can see it takes a little bit of the texture away. Then I'm going to add another texture. from the Kalani collection, and this one is called Menahune? Menahune. Menahune. Thanks, Michelle. <laughs> uh, Except some Hawaii lingo. Oh, awesome. You can help me because I have no idea what I'm saying. <laughs> so we will place that on. It means little people, I think. Really? Yeah. So, um, this will automatically pay, place it as a soft light blending mode. And I'm going to take the opacity down to about 75% because it's just a little bit too strong. And then run the smoothing action again. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. And I'll just take it off just a little bit of the flowers so that their own texture can shine through. And that is basically what I did on Jane's photo. And I'll show you the before, and that's the after. 
I just I love how how these textures um, change a photo. They add color and texture, and it makes it more like a painting than a photograph. So these are always fun. So thank you, Jane, for sending us your awesome photo. The next one is a photo that Jennifer Turner submitted, and it's just. It's a neat photo anyway. I love alleyways, and this looks like it could probably be Italy, and if you've been there, I'm so jealous. <laughs> and um, we're going to turn it a little bit more, um, we're going to give it more of a vintage vibe. So we'll run the um, texture action thing. <laughs> And I'm going to select a few textures from the Old World collection. And the first one is Cal Calais, I think it's pronounced. Oops. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, I pushed the wrong button. <laughs> Sorry, I'm holding my notes and talking at the same time. So to rotate, I usually like to hover around a corner and then I hold the shift key and that um, does it at 15 degree angle. And that's funny because I never knew that. I'm learning something new at this webinar too. <laughs> oh, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> we need to edit together more often. <laughs> yeah. And just like the um, texture before, you don't have to do it proportionately or stretch it proportionately because unless it has something in the texture that needs it, like some kind of pattern. Like a bokeh, you don't want to stretch the circles to ovals because that would look kind of funny. So we'll let that run. And it adds just a little bit of um, texture around the edges, which is awesome. And I'm going to go ahead and leave the texture at 100% opacity. Uh, because it just it fits this photo. Then I'm going to add another texture. This one is from the Old World Collection too, and it's called Sicily. And we'll rotate it. And we're, that just, oh my gosh, I love this texture. It just made, um, it took this photo back in time. I just love that. And I'm going to actually leave it at 100%. Now, I don't always leave textures at 100% because it's sometimes just too much for the photo. But in this case, I like it. And actually, I use 100% opacity quite a bit tonight. So, yeah. Um, I'm going to add another um, action. This, oh, texture, sorry, texture. <laughs> and this one, you'll notice in the photo that the sky just seems a little bit blown out. So this one is going to add blue back into the sky. It might look a little bit funny right now, but bear with me. So this one I'm going to switch to multiply and then I'm going to take the opacity down to about 70%. And then on the mask I'm going to invert the mask from white to black so that I'm hiding what I just put on. To do that I click control I. Now I can go back in with my white soft round brush and paint in the sky. And sometimes I'll up the opacity on the brush to 100 and just paint that in. And don't worry about being particular because you can always go back to the black and then paint over the areas that you didn't really want the blue to show up. Okay, so now here's the before. 
and the after. Such a difference. I love this photo. Jennifer, thank you so much for submitting it. It's just awesome. So the next one is a photo that was submitted by Kim Stevens. And I just love flowers. They're just awesome, just like Michelle. Um, this one just screams for a texture. I love this. So I'm going to go ahead and add from the old world. No, wait, sorry. Pause for a minute. <laughs> I actually, this is something that I like to do on some of the, the photos that I edit. Um, I add an adjustment layer of hue saturation. And I'll take that all the way down to negative 100. Oops. Oops. <laughs> then um, I will apply the soft light blending mode and leave the opacity at 100. And you'll see it kind of, it really boosts the contrast. But I only want this contrast on the flowers. So I'm going to invert the mask again make it black so I'm hiding what I just did. And then with the soft round brush, I'll paint in over the areas that I want a little more contrasty. That's the word, right? Contrasty? That works. <laughs> I'll use it. Um, so now we are ready for, oh, how to invert the mask. You click on the rectangle, it will be white. And then you push control on your keyboard and I at the same time, and that inverts it to black. So a little shortcut. We love shortcuts. <laughs> so I'm going to apply the, an action from the Old World collection. Texture, sorry, texture from the Old War, World <laughs> collection. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting tongue-tied. This one is going to be Galileo. And I will rotate that and place it. And it, it automatically just gives warmth and deepness to the photo. It's just awesome. Um, and I'm going to run the smoothing action to get just a little bit of the texture off of the flowers. There's not a lot, but just enough to make me want to erase it. Now I'm going to go ahead and put on another action. Texture, texture. I caught myself this time. And rotate it. We're doing a lot of vertical photos tonight. I know, I noticed that with mine too. <laughs> okay, so this one way too strong. So I'm going to take the opacity down to 75%-ish. That'll work. And then I'm going to tone it down. And what this action does is um, it tones down the color, but it keeps the texture in the action. And I actually want to bring a little bit of that color back. So I'm going to go down to about 60-ish. So you'll see kind of what it did there. Now, oh, one more. <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to actually add another one. This is the fun thing with textures. Um, you can add however many you want. And it's fun to play. Rotate that. And it's fun because you can use the photo veil and the textures on the same pictures. Yes. So this one is too dark on the soft light blending mode, so I'm going to pop it up to screen. And that's way too light. So I'm going to take the opacity down to about oh, 58. It's great. And then, I'm going to, because it's a little bit too much um, texture on the flower, 
I'm going to take away some of that. So I'll take my um, soft round brush down to 50% opacity, and I'll make sure that the black is showing, make my brush just a little bit bigger. And I'll bring some of the uh, deepness back in to the flower areas. And then I'm going to run the smoothing action Oops. and make sure that the white is showing. And then I'll just take off that last bunch of texture over areas. And that's that. So here's the before and the after. So awesome photo. Thank you so much for submitting it. Kim, beautiful photo, beautiful. So the next one is a photo submitted by Kim Peterson, another Kim. <laughs> Um, this one, we're going to do the same saturation, hue saturation adjustment uh, that we did before. And we'll take it all the way down to negative 100. And then put a soft light blending mode on it. And what this is doing is it's really boosting the contrast, especially in the subject but it's a little bit too much. So I'm going to take it down to about 80. And then I want, see how the background is a little bit kind of misty? <laughs> um, I want to bring that back. So I'm going to do that control I and invert the mask so that I'm hiding what I just did. So I can go back in with my brush and paint the contrast back into the subject. So now when I go before and after, it's just, it gives it a good base for the textures to um, work on. So now I'm going to run or add another, or add a texture, the first texture. And this one I think is pronounced Vercelli. I'm going to go with that. <laughs> and I love this texture. It gives the photo a really nice, warm, uh, warm feel. And you'll notice when you, do, when you use textures on people, you want to get rid of the texture over the skin because it just does not look good. So I'm going to run the smoothing action and make sure that the white is showing 50% opacity is great. And just start taking off. It's really subtle, but it makes a huge difference if you do this one thing. Um, OK, now um, you'll notice that the photo looks just a little bit too orangey. So I'm going to run the tone it down action and take away some of the Oh yes, yes, everything that I'm doing in Photoshop here you can do in Elements. Uh, so yes. Now I'm gonna invert the mask again. And <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Then I'm going to paint over the skin, because that's where I noticed it the most. We don't want orange skin, we want good skin tone. So that's notice what it did there. I'll leave it in the hair, because it's kind of fun to have that golden look on the hair. Now one final at, or texture I'm going to apply is La Rochelle. And this one just gives it a nice texture area up over here. Um, and again, I'm going to run the smoothing action and take 
the texture off of the skin. Oh, and you'll notice it's just a little bit too, too much. So I'm going to take the opacity down to about 60. Now, you'll notice on some, some photos, when you add a texture, you might get a few spots like this that might look kind of strange. What I do is I'll select the texture layer, use the clone tool, I'll make the brush just a little bit bigger, and then hold Alt to sample the area, and then you can just paint away those areas to make them fit your photo. So you can customize your, your action, or textures that way. So now, if you look at the before, here's the after. Just, oh my gosh, this is a beautiful photo, Kim. So thank you so much for submitting it. Okay, the last photo we're going to edit today is one submitted by Shannon Shaw. And this is just such a cute photo. I, I was drawn to it the minute I saw it. And on this one, this editing, the editing techniques I'm going to show now might be just a teeny bit more advanced, but um, the same principles that I've been talking about apply. So I'm going to add the hue saturation, take the saturation all the way down. I'm going to leave it at 100, or leave it at normal. So Emily is asking, so are you only using textures and veils to photo to, to edit your photo, edit photos? Yes. Well, yes and no. Were you? Yeah. How do I, how do I answer? <laughs> um. Yeah. On some. A word. Um. Yeah. Yeah. We the way we add creativity and creative edits into the into our photos is we love to to use veils and textures. So um, that's how we add creativity. So a lot of my photos, this is Michelle talking, a lot of my photos, I will just do the basic foundation edits that just sort of clean up the photo and lay the foundation. And then most of my creativity comes from the photo veils and textures. So a lot of the creative edits you're seeing are from the photo veils and textures. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to, on this hue saturation le I almost said level layer, I'm going to take it down to about 50-ish percent. And then this is the trick that I love to do on a photo that I want to give a vintage vibe to. I'm going to duplicate the photo layer by um, hitting Control J on the keyboard. Then I'll move it above the hue saturation layer that I just made. And then I'll go and mm, uh, make the blending mode soft light. So see how it just changes the color tone? So before, it's more realistic, and then with these edits, it kind of makes it vintage -y. So it's exactly the look that we're going to going for. Now I'm going to add the first texture, and this one is from the Kalani collection. And <laughs> this one's called Kupu Kupu. Kupu Kupu. It's a fun. It's a fun one to say. <laughs> Then I'll stretch it over the photo. And then I'm going to apply, instead of soft light, I'm going to change it to hard light. And it's way too strong, so I'm going to take it down to about 55. And what I'm looking for is the edges right now. Um, I'm going to be masking out the color tone that's coming over the girl. So to do that, I will select the brush again, make sure that the black is showing because I'm on a white mask, 
and then I'll just kind of paint a little bit over her. Then, oh, sorry, I lost my place. I was looking at my other note. Okay, so now I'm going to run the smoothing action over the skin and some, some of the hair. And you don't have to be exact. Oh, wait. <laughs> Make sure that the white is showing when you're painting over a black or you're not going to be doing anything. <laughs> I'm going to actually take this to 100 because I don't want any texture on the skin areas. Okay, now I'm going to add another layer, uh, another texture on top. And this one is pronounced Kiki. Kiki. These Hawaiian names are so much fun. And this one I'm going to also change to hard light. And it's way too strong, so I'm going to take it down to 60-ish. Oh, Heather. Cool. Your daughter's nickname is Kiki. My, um, my nieces call me Kika. <laughs> it's, it's a cute story. They couldn't pronounce my name when they were younger, and it kind of evolved. So that's fun. Um, so now I'm going to um, add another texture, and this one is Honey. It's looking kind of muddy right now, but just wait. <laughs> it gets better. This one I'm going to leave at soft light and take the opacity down to 75. And then I'm going to smooth over the skin area. See how on the legs it just does not look good. Texture over skin, ugh. So it's kind of doing a little bit, but I'm going to, this next step is going to take it all away. So, what I'm going to do is select all of the layers that I just worked on. I'm going to right click and duplicate them. Then I'm going to merge the layers. Then I'm going to move it above this uh, kiki, kiki texture. And I'm going to link it to that one. And it, 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 that's just awesome. But there's too much texture still. So we're going to fix that. Um, first, we're going to go up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian, Gaussian Blur, Gaussian Blur. I've heard it say, I've heard it pronounced several ways, though. So. It's that one. <laughs> and we're just going to add a bunch of blur. And it just depends on the photo. It, it's giving it kind of a misty look to it. That's what we want. And you just kind of play around with the blur until it looks right for your photo. And I think that's just about right. So I'm going to go with that. Then I want to bring back some of the texture that was in the on the edges. So I'm going to add a layer mask to this and invert it with Control I. No wait, sorry, I'm not inverting it. I'm going to mask. So I'm going to select my black color, make a make the brush really big, and take the opacity down to 50% and then just start, wait, 
and start bringing in those areas. And you can see what that layer has done. So now, when I show you the before and then the after, it just gives it this magical beach fog type of look. So um, that's it. So thank you so much, Shannon, for submitting this photo. It's just beautiful. It's like I said before, it drew me in right off the bat. So thank you so much, everybody, for um, joining us tonight. We are actually going to um, – oh, i got to get my train of thought back. Um, okay, <laughs> sorry. So all of the textures and veils that we um, – demonstrated tonight are all available on our website and for the next two hours we are running a sale the whole shop is 30 percent off and so our collections are usually 35 dollars and so now in the next two hours you can get them for 20 24 50. so um if you'd like to purchase them now's the time it's a great sale and we have individual collections we have the Kalani, the Old World. We have the Fairy Tale Collection, which we didn't show tonight, but that's been um, out for a while. And then we have the Botanical Collection of Photo Veils and the Simplicity Photo Veils. And we've put together some package options, too, where you can save even more. And the Master Collection includes everything. So if you'd like to check that out, you can go to lovethatshop.com shop and use the coupon code CREATIVE and you, that you'll get the discount for the next two hours. I think it closes at 11.59 Eastern. And, and so now we're going to get to the part that you've all been waiting for. I know you've been actively participating in the chat and we love that. Thank you so much. It's been keeping Steve very busy. <laughs> Steve's my husband, by the way. So, um, yes. Be nice to him. <laughs> um, okay, so our first winner from the webinar tonight is going to win their, first, their choice of a photo texture or veil collection. And um, the winner is, and if you're here, give a shout out in the chat because we want to see the excitement. Um, Rory, Rory Sylvia, Silva, Sil Silva, Sylvia. Rory, are you here? Say yay! Okay, then our second um, winner is going to get their choice of photo texture and veil collection as well. And this one, this winner is Rhonda Hoover. So if you're here, we'd love for you to shout out. Say yay. Okay, now <laughs> we said a little bit, or we talked a little bit about this in the beginning. Um, oh, yay, Rhonda. Congratulations. You're going to have so much fun with these. Uh, we can't wait to see what you come up with. So in the beginning, we talked a little bit about a workshop that we're putting together in March. And it's going to cover a lot of what you saw tonight, a lot of the foundation edits that Michelle talked about, and the, and the, um, oh. so it's going to, it's going to be like an introduction to elements. It's going to go over the tools. It's going to go over, um, the foundation editing that Michelle talked about, and then some of these creative edits all in Elements. And so we're busy working on that, and it's going to be coming out in March. So this next winner, um, you are going to win a seat in that workshop. And the winner is Emily Moore. So if you're here, shout out, go, yay, I'm so excited. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's a value of $147, and um, 
Awesome, Emily. You're going to have so much fun. We're excited about that workshop. So um, anyway, thank you all so much for joining us tonight. We've had a blast, and thank you for um, bearing with us for these te technical glitches. Anytime we do something live, ugh, there's always something that comes up. So thank you for being patient. Um, we're going to jump into the Q&A section now. Um, oh, we're fixing the coupon code. So give us a second. We will get that coupon code working. Oh, yeah, sorry. So the winners. Oh, my gosh, my brain is not with it tonight. Um, if you are Rory, Sylvia, Rhonda Hoover, and Emily Moore, if you can email me, Missy, at Misty at lovethatshot.com. It's M I S T I at lovethatshot.com. And uh, we'll get y'all taken care of. But the winners that we announced for the, in the edits that we did, we have your information. So um, we are going to jump into the QA. Wow, you guys are awesome. It looks like we have tons of questions. So um, we're, we're going to stay here probably till um, 9 o'clock. 11 Eastern. 11 Eastern. So um, if you'd like to stick around and we're going to answer questions. If you, if you still have some, go ahead and pop them into the ask questions. And if we don't get to all of your questions tonight, we're going to record them, or we have recorded them, and we're going to um, answer them through our Facebook wall or blog. So have no fear. We will answer your questions. So I'm sure. Um, Michelle, take over for a second. Okay. So um, Ruth Krenz asked, is this info only if you have Photoshop or can you use with Corel? Um, we, we haven't used Corel, so I can't answer definitively, but as far as I know, you can use textures in um, photo editing programs like that. I'm not sure of the details, but as far as I know, it is possible. The steps may not be exactly the same as we do in Photoshop and Elements, but I, I think you can. And Angela Lavoir, I think, asked, what was the hue set at to make sepia? Um, this was in the photo veil edit at the first of the webinar. And with the hue saturation adjustment layer, I set the hue at 30. Its default is set at 20 or at zero, but I change it to 30. So if you're still here, Angela, I hope that answers your question. And let's go here and then go further up. Rhonda, is there one group of veils that you'd suggest for beginning? Um, they, they're both actually very good. They're, they're different, but they're both very good. Um, it's hard to say one that I'd, I'd recommend over the other. Um, I don't know. It's, that one, that one veil that you said that you use all the time, Privet. Okay. Which one is that in? Yes, um, that Privet is in the botanical collection, and that's one I use on almost every one of my photos. So, I I would recommend that collection based on that fact. So, it is a really good one that works on most any photo. And we just got word from our tech guy. That the create or the coupon code is now working. We had a glitch in it, it had expired. 
for some reason, any, you know, we're live. <laughs> so, um, Diana Smith asks, will textures and veils work on Photoshop Elements 10? Yes. These will work on any version of Photoshop. It, it'll work on Photoshop CS3, CS5, Photoshop Elements. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, <laughs> eleven. It it works on every one of them, so that's really great. And Melissa Swecker asked, "Does the smoothing action just work on skin and hair?" No, it does not. If you have any anything on your photo that you want to take the texture out of, you can just use that brush to paint in um, or paint away those areas. So. Which collection? Okay, Angela, all of our collections include the actions, or all of the um, texture collections include the actions that will take the smoothing. Or we'll do the smoothing. Yes. <laughs> each, each set of textures you buy, or you'll, all the actions we used tonight will come with either the photo veils or the textures. Yeah. So they're, they are included. <laughs> Heather asks, so you take straight out of camera photos and just use veils? You don't edit levels, curves, or selective color edits and then do the textures and veils? It, that totally depends on your picture and what you want to do with it. Photo veils, it can go straight on your straight out of camera pictures and I'll, sometimes I'll do that and they work fantastic. Um, you can edit levels and curves and other edits before you add veils. It's just totally your personal preference. Um, Ruth Krems asked, this may sound like a silly question. Um, there are no silly questions, by the way. We love questions. Um, she hasn't started photo editing yet. Do you have to use a mouse or can you use the touch on your computer? I don't usually use a mouse for typing, so just asking. Um, it is possible, but I highly recommend using a mouse and um, a lot of a lot of people also use um, tablets. The is it Wacom? Wacom tablets, and that's a pen that you can draw with. But I use a mouse. Michelle uses a mouse. Um, you can use the touch on your on your laptop, but it would be really hard. So it's kind of oh, compared to um, like typing on your keyboard with an oven mitt on your hand. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's possible, but it's difficult. <laughs> so mouse is, ma ma mice <laughs> makes it easier. Um, a mouse. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, so Rhonda Hoover asked, how do you know whether to use the black or the white in the brush tool? Um, when you're like, when you add a mask or when you run an action that adds a mask automatically, if that mask area is white, you're going to always want to use the black brush on the black brush because that way um, you're painting away the areas that. Um, you just edited. If yeah. it's if it's black, if that photo mask layer um, box is black, you're always going to want to use the white because then you can paint in the areas that you want to show. And I always just remember use the opposite color. Yes. So if it's white, use black. If it's a black mask, use white. So just think I need the opposite color. Okay, so Delinda asks, I'm familiar with working with textures, but I'm wondering how you decide beforehand which textures you're going to use on each photo. Um, to me, when I look at a photo, and you know, since you've 
you're familiar with working with them, um, you know that not all photos work with textures. Um, there are certain photos or certain things in a photo that we look for. Um, we look for lots of negative space. We look for um, uh, blurriness so that the texture can shine through. And mid-range tones, that way that the soft light blending mode can um, show off the texture. And so how I choose a specific, a specific texture for a photo is I look for, well, specifically in the Kalani collection, their bright colors, they have kind of a tropical vibe to them. So I've noticed that, you know, like the last photo that I, that I edited, it has that tropical vibe to it. And um, I've noticed on flower photos, it really works you want to make sure that the texture that you're picking kind of matches the photo in a way. Also, like on the um, old world collection of photo textures, they have a lot of grunginess and oldness to them. So I look for photos that I want to turn kind of vintagey or I want to take back in time. I use the Old World collection a lot on my vintage boat photography. So you look at you look at the color tones that are in the in the texture and in your photo and you can decide, you know, I want to warm this up a little bit and I want to add some grungy texture to it. So that's how I kind of the thought process when I um, decide what texture I put on a photo. Does that make sense? Sarah Danberg asks, how do you decide when you are going to use a texture or a veil, and do you ever use both? Um, that Misty kind of answered a part of that question. It, it depends on what photos you're using and the color tones and, and things like that. And I, I sort of use the same process when I put photo veils on my pictures. But then sometimes I just will experiment and throw stuff on and see if it looks good. So that's kind of my process when choosing a photo veil um, because it's sometimes surprising which photo veils will look good on, on certain pictures. And yes, we do use both. Uh, we'll put photo veils on and then on a certain picture and then we'll throw textures on top of that. So you can use both. And Heather asks, I have never used textures or veils on photos. What makes them a must use on photos? I can't imagine taking hundreds of photos and going through all of them and trying out all the different textures or veils to see what works. It would take forever to edit all of them. How do you determine which photo to use them on? And I agree, Heather. <laughs> it would take forever to try out photo or textures on every single photo that you take. Um, it kind of goes back to the question that we answered earlier. Um, you uh, go through all of your photos, and just like you pull out ones that you want to edit to to keep, you pull out ones that you think might work for a texture, and then it, you're selective in the process. You pick one, and then you just pick and choose some photos or textures and play around with them on that photo. So we're not. We're not telling you to go through thousands of photos and add textures to all of them because, like I said earlier, not all photos work with textures anyway. So you just um, decide which ones, um, like if they're blurry or the blurry backgrounds or have a lot of negative space, if a texture will work with them. So hope that answers that. Sorry, we're reading some questions. <laughs> you know, um, I'm not sure who wrote this. It doesn't have a name, but they asked, 
Do certain textures lend themselves to certain types of photos? For example, is one set of textures better for flowers and plants and another good for people or portraits or people portraits? Um, it just depends on the the texture. Um, you can use either or. It doesn't matter. It just um, depends on the photo that you're looking at. And what I would suggest is just um, if you're looking at doing a portrait and you have a certain veil or texture that you want to apply to it, just start practicing and seeing what works for your style of photography or what works for your photos. Um, there's no set rule for what works on um, portraits or flowers. Um, one thing, though, and I said earlier, that you want to smooth over the textures on skin for sure, because it makes skin just look really old and and ugly. So if you're ever using a texture over portraits, definitely smooth the skin, because um, that will make a huge difference. Um, I want to add something too, and once you start using the textures and the photo veils and get really familiar with them, it, this whole process will go faster and it will be easier to tell, oh, that texture is going to look good on this photo. I know this photo veil is going to work with this photo. So once you use them and really play with them, you'll start learning which ones go with which kind of photos. And that was my process in discovering that the privet photo veil in the botanical collection was a really good go-to veil that works on every photo. So once you work with them and experiment with them, you, um, certain textures and photo veils are just going to pop out and stand out as good ones to go to with every photo. And um, you'll learn just which which ones work with what types of photos. So it will get easier as you as time goes on. And Connie Etter asks, you're not flattening after the veils, are you? No. I um some people have it is some people have different processes in their editing style that they like to do, and I I don't flatten ever because I like to come back and and redo some layers or or look at stuff again. So my editing style is I never flatten. Um, some people really like to do it. I just haven't. I I, I it's not what I like to do. <laughs> uh, it's it's um, important to remember the non-destructive editing because you can always go back in and change or um, find out what you did. Because yeah. there's been so many times where, I, where I've edited a photo and I love it. And when I was first learning, I would go back and say, what did I do? And I've flattened all of my layers and I'm like, oh no. Yeah. So, and we teach about non-destructive editing in the new elements workshop, so we'll explain everything mm -hmm. um, that has to do with that there. And Tina Elfrink asked, so with the veils, is there not texture that needs to be removed from the skin and such? No, the photo veils are color only. They have no texture to them, so you don't need to remove it from the skin. Um, so. Yeah, the photo veils are just color that melts into your photos. There's no texture at all. And Corey is asking, do your packages come with recipes? On the landing pages or the information pages that um, are linked up on the shop that is at lovethatshot.com slash shop, all of those pages have at least four recipes on them of how we edited and before and afters of photos. Um, we're always doing stuff, um, showing before and afters, and having recipes on our uh, website and Facebook. We usually post, if we're using a texture on a photo, we usually post what we used and um, the blending mode and things like that. So.
Oh, <laughs> Melissa. Uh, Melissa Swecker. What is the lose weight action? That's actually something that is included with the new Photoshop Elements 11. I didn't make it, so I and I haven't, I haven't tried it out yet, so we don't know. And Angela Lavoir asked, should the veils always cover the entire photo? Yes, or you'll get parts with the color and and parts hard with edges. hard edges. So always. Resize the photo veil to cover your entire photo. And if you're wanting it only to be in part, like cover part of a photo, you can always add a mask to it and mask in or out the areas that you don't want the veil over. So um, that'll give you smooth edges. And Melissa Slecker. Also asked, are all the photos you use straight out of the camera? All of the photos we used from the submissions, yes, they are, well, well, some of them may have been edited yeah. um, levels and things or sharpening. Yeah, some weren't edited, but we, they, the people who submitted didn't specify whether they edited them or not. Some, I'm sure, did and some mm -hmm. didn't. And Brenda asks, are the photo veils in JPEG? Yes, they are. And um, oh, what was I going to say? the veils, they work just like textures. If you were to apply them manually, all you would do is drag the veil from your folder onto your photo. Um, they work just like textures that way. Yeah. And they are high quality. So they're, they're, High large, resolution. High resolution. They're large files, so. Anita Starkoff asks, are there layer are layer masks used to remove veil from areas like faces? Does it affect overall color? Yes, the photo veils affect the overall color. If you find that it's too strong on a face, you can use the masking um, feature to take it off of the face. I do that quite often. So it, it works similar to what Misty was showing with the textures. Uh, you can do that with photo veils from areas that get too strong. Um, Chelsea asks, can you use actions in older versions of uh, elements as well. I have eight, but I don't remember seeing actions anywhere. Um, the I I think it's just this last elements 11 that has come out where you can load actions um, in the software. The four in previous versions, um, there it's a process where you have to go in and edit the program files. So we're excited about the new update that Elements made because it makes using actions a whole lot easier. But um, if you do have a, a previous version, you can use textures and veils um, manually just by dragging and dropping the veil or texture over your photo and then applying a blending mode. And Tina Taylor asked, do these photo veils work with Photoshop Elements 9? Yes, they do. And Angie Helmick asked, do you recommend these edits for a beginner? Yes, these are very, very simple edits that anyone can do it, even if you're just starting out. So they're very simple. Um, Tina Taylor is asking, how do you load them into Photoshop Elements 9? Is it just like you do for the actions? If you're still here, Tina, what do you mean by loading? What are you referring to when you say, how do you load them into Photoshop Elements 9? 
if it's the the photo or the photo veils and textures don't need to be loaded in. There are separate files that you um, can just drag and drop onto your photo. We use the actions to make it simple. Um, the action that you do not need the action to apply them. Um, actions that if you don't use actions in the in your Elements Nine program, then um, you can manually put them on your photos really easily. Um, and Linda, um, we have fixed the problem with simplicity. You can, it is working now. So refresh and download again. Or Um, Connie, is it, you asked, you have a couple packaged collections. Do you only have the ones shown? I kind of wanted Simplicity and Kalani for the package. Is that possible or do I need to buy each? Right now, those are the only packaged ones that we have. If you'd like both, um, you'll need to buy them individually. Oh. Sorry, we're we're trying to keep up with the chat or the questions. I think we've covered everything there. We can. I think we've covered everything in the um, Q and A part. Um, if you still have questions, we're still here. Um, pop them into the chat, and we'll go from there. So. Any idea? Emily says, any idea on when the workshop will be? Um, we're planning on it releasing at the end of the month, end of March. So we're, we're busy working on it, and we're going to load it with lots of, good, lots of good information. Heather Sutton is asking, what about a Photoshop workshop? That is in the works next. So after our elements workshop is completed, we are going to dive right into the Photoshop workshop. And we're going to cover a lot. It's going to be similar to the elements workshop with the techniques and tools. And, and the, we're going to cover foundation editing and, um, all creative, of, edit and creative editing. So we'll, we'll take you through the program and show you all the cool stuff it does. So look for that coming within the next couple months. And for all those who are having difficulties downloading, we are working on it, and it should be our tech guys are, are working in hyperspeed behind the, the computers here. Angela, how do you drag in a veil in Elements to place over a photo? There's a couple ways you can do this. Um, one is have your photo open and then go to File up in the top navigation menu and click on Open. Then navigate to where you have your photo veil saved and select the one you want and then click Open. Then that will open it as a separate file. So you'll have your photo file open and the photo veil file open. Um, when you do that, just click on the photo veil, hold it, and drag it onto your photo and then you can work from there. Another way, and this is the way I do it all the time, if I'm not using the action, I will have my folder open with all my photo veils, and I'll have the elements on behind that. I'll click on the photo veil in my folder and drag it into Photoshop and, drag and release it right on top of my photo, and then work from there. I, did, does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. And I'm getting word from the technical guys that the problem with Simplicity Collection has been corrected. If you're still having problems downloading, um, refre try refreshing the page. If that doesn't work, try closing everything down and logging back in. If something is hanging up there. So. 
Um, Emily asks, can you do open place to add? Um, I'm thinking that you're, if it's what I'm thinking, you can. If you go up to file and then go down to the menu and select place, it will open up a menu where you can select the veil or texture. Yes, yes, you can. Huh. Angela, I have never come across that problem before. Um, um, how are you trying, how are you, what? How are you trying to add the veil or open it? What, what's the process you're using to open the veil? I know, but the process. Mm -hmm. Um, if you're, okay, Angela, if you're trying to use the action in not in Elements Nine, it may not work. Um, um. Wow. Try, Angela, try a different veil. I'm wondering if it's just that one. If it's that one, there may be a, something we need to track down. But try a different one and let us know if it's... That's, that's really odd because it is a JPEG file. It's just the same as a photo. So... It's it's confounding us. <laughs> We've never run across this problem before. We're stumped and we kind of want to track it down. <laughs> so, Heather, uh, thank you so much. We're so glad that you were able to listen in. Have a great night. <laughs> um, Teresa is asking, I don't have Photoshop. Will the, did you answer that one? Oh. No, that just came in. Will the program still download? I just pro I just purchased. Um the the download you just purchased, it's going to be a file of JPEGs. So um if you're using elements or you know, then it should work because they're just JPEG files. Oh my goodness, it's almost nine. I can't believe that um, time went by fast. Wow. <laughs> um we're getting um a message from the tech guys that if you're having issues, it's only with the simplicity collection simplicity collection and they're tracking it down. They um and support will be getting a hold of you. So if you've contacted support, they will figure it out. So have no worries. <laughs> oh, Tina, yay, I'm so excited. They're so much fun, aren't they? Oh, and if you're using any of our any of our textures or veils, we would so love to see what you're coming up with. So um, post them on our Facebook wall. And you can get there by typing in facebook.com slash LTS friends, um, and we would love to see them. So post them on there, for sure. <laughs> Diana, thank you so much for being here. We're so glad you were able to make it. And Julie? And Delinda and Kim, thank you all for being here. We're, we had a blast. Even through some technical glitches, we had fun. So we're so glad that you 
you had patience with us. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to be doing lots of these. Yes. So we're, we're so glad you're having fun. Oh, good, Angela. I'm glad that it worked for you. Oh, Kim, thank you. Oh, sometimes we sound like we're 12, <laughs> but thank you. That's, that's sweet. <laughs> well, the clock just turned to 9 o'clock. I think we're going to go ahead and, and shut things down. Thank you all so much for being here with us tonight. We had a blast. Hope you had a blast and learned a thing or two. And um, yes, if you if you use any of our textures or veils, please show us. We want to see um, what you do with them. So until next time, we'll see you later. <laughs>